Hey everyone, John here. Still doing the hospitality course and even though I really am enjoying it and there's a lot that I'm loving from it, it's just, it is really emotionally taxing and that, um, that I find out I get really socially exhausted of people. Like, I spend like eight hours with like some people but then, um, just after that I just, I just completely switch off and kind of go and do my own dull things. I'm just gonna go over some of the dough projects that I've done over the past week. Um, I seem to be doing them in spurts rather than just slowly working on each of them kind of thing. So I'm back at my partner's house and so some of the dolls that I was working on I did leave at my house. Um, two of them were the vintage skippers that I um, showed in my last video. And the other one was the um, Mattel Disney Ariel. After I fixed up all the hair and stuff, like I just felt like they were complete enough to me that I didn't need to bring them here. But yeah, all of um, the dolls that I did fix up, but I didn't bring all the hair, just became like this. Um, yeah, it's very soft, very silky. Like you just needed to have a bit of work for it. And as you can see, this is my Generation Go Chelsea. Yep. Um, I put her on the Integrity Toys Basic Edition body. Um, just because I really want to put her on a um, Fashionista-like jointed body or a uh, Made to Move body. But I, I can't find any kind of... Um, I can't find either one in, in store right now. So I'm just kind of hoping that I find like either the Asian made to move body or the um or a Raquel like out and savers like if I find any time this week but yeah even though I do already have one like all the way up there I'm very happy <laughs> that I got a second one I don't know I just I really love her face sculpt I really love how well her hair came out and yeah a little washed up there so yeah I also ended up putting my Takara Barbie head on a um, Obitsu 27cm body. And I definitely think it fits her anime-esque proportions a lot better. But um, even though everyone really loves the Obitsu posability, I just... I really don't like posing it in general just because like her torso is like really loose and that even though like it can bend, sometimes like it pops out of its joint really easily and stuff, and I just I really don't like playing around with that. But I really do love the proportions with her head and stuff, so maybe if I find like, you know, a cheap um MC Square body or a Disney Descendants body, I might rebody her, but for the time being, she looks pretty cute on this body. Her outfit is um a Lika Chan um, outfit set that one of my, um, Ira, <laughs> one of my, um, friends got for me, um, when she was visiting Japan, and even though it was meant for, like, a smaller doll, it really fits her nicely in this kind of way. So I actually tried putting the MC Square body with the, um, with one of my Francie heads, but it turns out that, like, it just doesn't fit, like, it didn't really fit well proportionally, so... This is what I did with my pizza, Stacy. And she's wearing an outfit by um, Andrea. And so, yeah. I had to mod the neck knob so that her head would actually tilt and stuff, but otherwise, I do really like the proportions and the color match. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the made to move body. Oh. I'm not a huge fan of the MC Square body, it's just, it's very awkwardly sculpted and that it has very weird proportions, but you know, since the I did get these two at the same kind of doll show, I do feel like they do belong together. And yeah, I think a little Jurassic Park-esque like um, outfit does go well with her gloves and stuff, so yeah, I love it. So. Another thing I finished doing is putting my Twilight Bella legs onto this Disney Store Cinderella body. And so, yeah. Um, 
this doll just had so much, so much glue head. Like, I'm still really debating whether I should rip out all her hair and reroute her, or if I should just trash the head and stuff. It's just like, her hair is still very, very sticky, so I'm hoping that if I put her head, like, to soak up some more talcum powder for the next couple of days, like, it's at least a bit more treatable instead of just looking kind of yucky, <laughs> essentially. And so, yeah, um, modding the legs onto this body was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be, um, <laughs> as you can see. Um, the dolls with these kind of legs, but on a belly button body, turns out their legs are a tiny bit wider than the ones on the um, 19, 1970s, like gymnasts style um, hip joints. Um, I guess it's because they're slightly modded so that they could fit the um, belly button body. The Disney store bodies, even though they're very similar to um, Fashionista Barbie, like their their torsos are a lot um, skinnier if you compare them with um, the belly button body, especially in the waist and like the hips are very much smaller. So I had to um, dremel out like a huge chunk of her hip sockets that, so that the uh, like legs could actually fit in there. And so yeah, um, also um, people who've got the Disney Store bodies with the um, articulated knees and articulated ankles. They always suffer like the legs um splaying like that when it tries to sit down, and I always wondered why. Why that did that happen? And when I removed the rubber legs on this one, turns out the hips don't actually go through the center like this. It was actually two separate pegs going up in an angle like that. And even though when um the like rubbery legs when you fold them up like that, like it sort of just like turned outward, so it was slightly splayed, but. It wasn't really noticeable, but when they tried putting articulated legs onto there, it definitely created like a huge issue. So when I um, dremeled out like a channel through here, I had to be very careful because both, because my drill kept slipping, kept going up that way, like in both angles. So I had to be very careful, like drill a channel going down through the center like that. But otherwise, for like a doll that cost me under five dollars to be like fully articulated like this. I'm very happy that I was able to cobble her together from like two different dolls. And yeah. I did bring two of my um, vintage dolls that I cleaned up with me. So here's Malibu Ken. He really didn't need any kind of like outfit change to him. I mean like any kind of like drastic change to him. I just needed to clean him up and give him clothes. And here's my um, Malibu Francie, which had awful, awful dried frizzy hair. And I quickly rerouted her using the tool method. So I ch cut out chunks of hair and then plugged them in. And I honestly was going to give her a bob and stuff, but after I finished rerouting her, it just almost looked like it was her original hair length. And so I'm very, very, like, it's static that like her hair turned out so well after I boil washed and everything because I did steal her hair from a strawberry shortcake um, doll and the ends are like really frizzy and really dry feeling uh, but I'm very happy that like it, it feels very soft here it looks all straight and nice and she is wearing a dress by Andrea um, aka Dolls Ahoy and just a weird side note the strawberry shortcake doll I got it has absolutely no rooting holes aside from the part and the hairline. So I'm very happy that like about half of her hair went to her and it still makes it look very beautiful and stuff. I might repaint her eyes to either match her hair color or to be the opposite hair color. But otherwise I'm very happy how she turned out right now. So yeah. And then I guess finally from the Barbie Bricks and Beyond pile of dolls, I did end up rebodying my Integrity Toys Basic Edition Desirable, and I put her on a made-to-move body. 
I did happen to find this body at Kmart for thirteen dollars, but it was the last one, and there was just a whole lot of um, other made to move dolls that were just Barbie or Teresa, and the skin tone match is oh, like perfect. Like it goes well with her proportions much more than this body did. Like it's like very tall. It's very like Integrity Toys necks are very wide, and I guess it just goes very well on the Barbie body. And I did steal um, Doe Dirt's idea of putting the of putting the DC superhero girls. Um, Poison Ivy hands on this body, just because her head is a lot smaller than, um, like other Barbies, like, I don't know if you can see, but her head is slightly larger. The made to move hands look really out of proportion for her, and, I don't know, I think these hands really help her make, look, make her look a lot more expressive, while also bringing her proportions in together a lot more. And I just, I love her so much, like, she's also wearing a J Jason Wu Misaki Traffic Stoppers pink dress, which I think really goes well with the colouring, so yeah. Also, another random hybrid that I made from spare parts, um, Andrea sent me this, um, repainted clone head that she did, and I put her on a Moxie Teen body, which is ginormous. But the skin tone match is like beautiful and I don't know, I really like the quirky proportions because the head is slightly larger than um, other 1-6 scale dolls that I really didn't feel comfortable putting her on a fashionista body or whatever. So I think this kind of hybrid works for her for the time being. It feels very Andrea-like and you know, I think she, she would like seeing um, such a kind of crazy hybrid together, so yeah. So, that was basically all of my projects for the time being, but I did end up getting three packages coming in the mail when I was at um, doing my hospitality course, and they all went to my partner's house. So, waiting to get my um, doll packages, because I did have a couple of friends sending me some doll stuff. And the first doll stuff that um, I, I was waiting for the longest was this um, Spectra line Tom Comet head and as you can see I put him on a Fashionista Ken body and I honestly just wanted him for his blue sparkly hair because you rarely see any kind of male dolls with fantasy hair in general and I just like he's really really 80s and I honestly was expecting his head to be super orange so I was going to paint up his body to look more like an android or robot kind of body. But I don't know, I really like the color match for him right now. I just need to find him like a suitably 80s outfit to go on him. But otherwise, yeah. Thank you so much, um, Pandollop, for your like sale for him. Like I'm just, I'm very ecstatic to like own like such a random weird doll part. And yeah, next package was my... Um, was from Andrea, aka Dolls Ahoy. She, um, in one of her doll videos, she found a she found three little kittle dolls, and when I saw them, I was just like, oh gosh, I've never seen little kittles, and she, like I've never seen little kittles like owned by anyone who isn't you know, who isn't a exclusively little kittle collector, and so I asked her if I could buy them off her because I know that. Um, she does like to pick up doll parts, but she doesn't always have, like, a plan or a, like, any kind of, like, real attachment to them. She just picks them up because she knows that they're valuable to someone. And so, she, yes, she sold them to me, and I'm very excited because um, these are my first full-sized little kittles. My other little kittle is actually, um, was actually a perfume bottle kittle. And even though, like, um, ordinary little kittles, their heads are 1-6 scale, the perfume bottle ones, their heads are actually 1-12 scale. So I put my one on a, um, yeah, on a Pico Nemo body, and, yeah. But, 
as you can see, it's like a different scale to my skedaddle um, little kittle. And I just put her in a Kali doll dress that I had in my box of Kali doll clothes. And yeah, um, the other two little kittles, they had like really tiny weird bodies and I'm not a huge fan of them, but I really did love their heads. So I put both of their bodies on 2D size bodies because I always need a lot more, like I really want to get more 2D size dolls, but um, the friends are always either really rare and expensive or that they're always just kind of like a recolor of the 2D sculpt. So I feel like this is a nice way to get like a authentic kind of um, vintage metal head um, kind of friend for my 2D dolls without needing to break the bank. Um, she's on a kind of broken armed um, 2D body so that's why her arms just stick out instead of just being able to um, bend them in like that. And he's on a um, Playmates um, strawberry shortcake body which is one of the only um, doll bodies that I found make good replacements for 2D bodies just because I haven't been able to find any other kind of toddler sized doll that are the same kind of height and width as 2D is. So yeah, I'm so glad now that 2D has more minions to hang around with her, so yeah. Andrea did send me a bunch of other things as well, um, doll parts wise, but I, and, um, the only one that I've really done anything so far was this, um, Beacon, uh, Birkin, Bikin, Bikin, I don't know. It was just like, um, it was a Disney Snow White doll before Mattel got the Disney license and it was like the 80s or something. So it predated the, um, Renaissance era movies. But, yeah, so, I, I'm i so happy that she sent me this doll head, just because I already have um what, another doll made by the same company. Um, he's the Prince Charming doll from Cinderella, but, you know, he's kind of buried in one of these boxes behind me. But, when I finally get to unpack all of them, he has a friend waiting for him now, so, yeah. Random side note, random side note, um... This is one of the live bodies that I bought brand new from the store, and when I put my um, Snow White head on it, like, I found out that her hips have actually cracked, if you can see that. Like, it comp like the, it started cracking from here to there, and then her legs fell off when I um, tried posing them when I dressed her, and I was like, oh god, what did I do? Like, And I don't think I did... Like, I've done nothing really drastic with these live bodies, apart from, like, posing them and stuff. So, like, if you guys do have live bodies, like, I would be very careful just to see if there's any kind of cracks forming around the hips. Because, even though I do customize them, like, and stuff, I don't ever, like, touch that kind of hip area, because it's already, um, like, it's already good enough range of motion that I don't need to. So, yeah. Just be very careful if you do have live dolls, I guess. And also another doll head that Andrea sent me was this um, knockoff Hasbro leggy head, which I've put onto the sprayer body for the time being. But I don't know, I think she has a kind of like really snarky charm to her. I just I just think I have to get her a ever after high body to make her full um, live up to her full potential. But yeah. And she did send me a bunch of other things, but, um, and I would have done a box opening video of these other things, um, but when I did open them, I really got emotional and I felt really embarrassed when I was trying to edit the footage and stuff, so, yeah, um, and the reason why I got really emotional is, um, the next doll I'm going to show you guys, and it's this one. It's my Star Trek Vina um, doll that was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive and she was like an amazing gift from one of my Tumblr um, friends, um, Katara Mov. And I'm just, I'm so eternally grateful, like, <laughs> I, I keep, 
Like, every time I think about, like, how generous of gift she is, like, I always get really, really emotional, and... Yeah, uh, when I did film the box opening yesterday, I just, I got really, really weepy, and I got, like, I really got emotional, and I just didn't want to... When I saw the footage again, I just didn't want to put that out there for the time being, so... But, um... Yeah, she came with her original dress and stand and everything, but... Um... After playing around with her a bit more, she was definitely clearly intended to be a box-only doll, despite having um, a modified made-to-move body. Her dress, um, it's unhemmed around the edges, and they're um, double-sided taped onto her leg. So it was very, very hard um, trying to peel off her dress without it tearing and everything. And her hair style was very, very... It was very ugly. It was the ultimate blah 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 kind of bangs, but it was like around the very top of it. And yeah, um, and she didn't even come with shoes, but... But I absolutely love her, like... When I finally got back to my partner's house, like... I just... I had to stop myself from just instantly cutting off all of her curls and just like re it, because... We, we had to do other things that day, so... But I finally got around to rerouting the top of her head and everything, and her hair is just, it's gorgeous now after I conditioned it and boiled it. And, yeah. This is my first time having the Mermaid Sculpt doll. Like, um, because it's just been used on other collector's dolls, and it's often been confused for the Louis Vuitton head or the um, Karl Lager Sculpt. But I think it's, it stands out on its own. And yeah, she does use the modified made-to-move body, which doesn't have ankle joints, thigh joints, or a torso joint. But I actually really like these changes because um, her legs are all hard plastic, so um, I don't have to worry about staining as much as I do with my made-to-move bodies do. And also, the ankle joints are awful, awful for like if your dolls don't have like kind of anything to cover the ankle. So... I'm glad that this doll doesn't have the ankle joints. And while I would have loved some kind of like leg rotation, it isn't such a huge deal breaker for me considering that a lot of my dolls do have old style knee joints, like the hinge joints here, or that they are on the live body, you know? So, and the torso joint, like, it just didn't, like, even though I do like the kind of added personality you get from a torso joint, it isn't essential to me either. Like, what I really care about is having, like, fully articulated, like, double-jointed elbows, arm rotation, wrist joints, and yeah. And she's finally wearing my other um, Integrity Toys dress. I've been trying to find a doll that can actually fit this dress because it's so form-fitting. And I really wanted to put it on my, um, on my Wicked Witch body, but um, when I tried to, like, it started rubbing, ch um, off the paint around her body, like, even not around her joints. So, now I finally have a green doll that I don't have to worry about it, like, damaging the paint on it. So, yay. And, yeah. <laughs> I guess they have the same hairstyle now, so, yeah. But, <sighs> this is my first San Diego Comic Con doll, and I'm just, I'm so, so grateful that have such amazing doll friends that are able to get me, like, things that I know I never would have been able to get otherwise in my life. And she's perfect, she's beautiful, and I'm, I'm so, I'm so grateful, I'm so happy that I have a fully posable jointed green doll that I don't have to worry about the joints chipping and that her face is amazing, like, I don't have to edit her face paint at all. Like, a lot of her hair, original hair is still intact, and that I didn't need to do a full reroute. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so grateful, I'm so happy, and... Yeah, I just, I feel like this has been a good week for me, even though I haven't done much doll-wise. So yeah. Thank you so much again for watching my video, and I hope to see you guys soon. So, see ya.